Well, I'm back with YT, Professor Greg White, OBE. We never forget the OBE, YT. Never, never. It's the most important part of it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to discuss a little bit more about protein, why you need protein, training, how much training, when you use the right collagens and all that type of thing. So let's kick off with uh, protein. Why is it really important? How much do we actually need? Does it matter? Well, I mean, obviously, protein is incredibly important, and protein makes up you know many of the cells in our body, from organs you know through through to things like the immune system, where protein is important. And so, protein is incredibly important. First off, number one is I guess you know the, the key issue is you know can we produce our own protein uh, internally, what we call endogenously, uh, and of course we can, uh, but actually there are what we call essential. Uh, proteins which we need to take in in our diet so they're around about 20 20 amino acids uh seven to eight of them are essential and so therefore what we do need is protein in our diet and and, and obviously diet is the best source of, of protein where does that protein come from a whole variety of different uh of different areas obviously we, we understand the sort of the animal-based products uh, where we see it in in greatest concentration so things like you know red meats white meats um but we also see it in in plant products as well so we can get we can get protein from a whole host of different sources from nuts and pulses and uh, and and green leaf vegetables and those type of things so th there are a number of different ways of taking it in uh, the question is do we need it yes we do because actually just naturally whether we're active or not we've got a turnover of, of muscle so we're, we're constantly breaking down muscle and, and resynthesizing rebuilding that muscle on a continuous basis um, of course, if we are highly active, what we know is that we turn, that rate of turnover is much higher. Uh, and because that rate of turnover is much higher, what that tends to, to point us towards is that, that we need more protein in our diet if we are active or very active. And so for the general population who should be doing the WHO guidelines for physical activity for health, so 30 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity every day, the recommendations tend to be 0.8 grams per kilogram body mass so that's what we that's what we're looking for generally and, and the important thing about this is it's spread across the day and should definitely include breakfast um, so i think sometimes people think that I'll, I'll take all my protein in at night you know when i sit down for the main meal what we should be doing is, is actually spreading that across the entire day so it's 0.8 grams per kilogram body body mass for for, for the general population for for athletes and particularly those people who are very active the recommendations often double that so up to 1.5 grams per kilogram uh, body mass so you can see that it, it's quite a lot more the more active you are the more the more damage we are doing to our muscles in a good way um, but the more turnover we've we've got and so therefore we have to supply that turnover with increased protein in the diet okay so that's really interesting so we understand at you perform that collagen is a structural protein and it's found in that connective tissue. It's found in the, the cartilage, which is obviously the, the natural shock absorber, moisturizer effectively for the joints, allowing movement. So do we need to take on all that protein required per day in a collagen form, or is it a different type of proteins are required in our diet? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great question, James. And, and of course, it is. It, it's you know, protein is not just one single thing. Uh, it's a it's a long chain of what we call amino acids. Uh, there are various different amino acids, and each of those amino acids have a, have a different role in the body. Uh, and so, what what we need to try and do is make sure that we've got a, a variety of protein sources in our diet. That's that's really important. Uh, and of course, not not only do, do, do protein sources bring protein, they're also linked to a host of other things. So, for example. Um, oily fish, a uh, great source of protein, but also has very high levels of uh, omega-3, which we know is, is beneficial for things like the immune, immune system, et cetera. So, uh, so uh, it's, it's not solely about the protein, but equally, what we have to remember is that something like collagen, for example, makes up around about a third of total body protein. So it's, it's it, not only is it an incredibly important protein, but also it's in very high quantities in the body. So making sure that we've got enough collagen is absolutely crucial alongside some of these other areas so for example you know the you perform whey protein uh, which includes collagen 
uh, actually has whey protein in it, which is a, a very a rich source of what we call leucine, which is valuable in, in muscle resynthesis. So each of these different types of protein will have a specific role in the body. And, and what we need to do is make sure that we've got a, an array of those proteins to optimize each of those functions uh, inside the body. Okay, so that, that's really interesting. So this is gonna lead me in to a, a number of different questions. Um, with obviously you and me, you know, there, there's a significant height difference <laughs> and a significant weight difference. Here. <laughs> no, cl clearly not you're on screen. Not you're, on screen. Not, you're nine foot, aren't you, or something like that? It's something like that, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, so on the serious note, you're 6'2", 6'3". Yeah. yeah um, I, I'm coming in there at a massive five foot seven on a good day, five, seven and a half. <laughs> yeah. You've got the half's important, you know. It's so much important. Um, but, you know, my, my body weight when I'm, I'm race fit is about 67, 68K. Uh, compared to you, where are you, I'm guessing... 80 high 80s 90s 82 82 83 when i'm when i'm racing so yeah okay so there's still a considerable difference um can we overload that protein loading like you know one point you said 1.5 grams per kilogram body weight um you know we branched on it this yesterday we looked at it yesterday and said like athletes tend to go all or nothing that's just because they don't have the knowledge can we overload collagen um, how much collagen is sufficient as a, as a part of that total collagen or total protein loading during the day? Where, where's your guidelines? What's your recommendations? So I, 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 in that, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question that, that sort of persists about overloading of protein in particular, very high protein diets. And whether that very high protein diet can have an impact, a negative impact on some of the systems in the body. So particularly, for example, the kidney. Um, I, I think in general, it's, it's very, very difficult to overload with protein, to take on too much protein, simply because it, you have to eat an awful lot. And, and I think the interesting thing here is, you know, having done, I mean, I've raced things like the Race Across America, the, the Marathon de Saab and, and those type of events where, we can, we're turning over around about 10,000 calories a day. One of the biggest problems, particularly with something like the Race Across America, one of the biggest problems was actually trying to consume that much. It's incredibly difficult to do. So I think the idea that you can, you can eat too much protein and consume too much protein is actually a very, very difficult thing to do, firstly. Secondly, the question is, is it particularly bad for you? I mean, the evidence is, is fairly equivocal on that. Um, but I guess my my take on this would be, look, if you eat too much protein, uh, you're going to have very expensive feces. Um, and so to save yourself the effort, what you should do, is you can just flush 20 pound notes down the toilet. It's probably the easier thing to do. OK, <laughs> you know, so I mean, it, it definitely is that old adage. It's not it's not about a little is good. And so therefore more is better. It really isn't about that. What we're trying to do is we're trying to hit that optimal note. And so those recommendations of 1.5 grams per kilogram body mass really are sort of the target. What we shouldn't be thinking is that's the target. So if we double it, it's going to be better. That's not the case. Um, when it comes to collagen, certainly most of the evidence, and again, what, what we are at Uperforms, we're science-based, we're evidence-based. Uh, and, and most of the evidence would point towards somewhere in the region of five to eight grams of collagen a day will bring about the type of results that we are looking for. Now, can we take in more collagen? Yes, we can. There doesn't appear to be any significant deleterious negative effect of taking uh, uh, extra collagen on. But the question is, do, why would we? Uh, what we want to do is hit that target. Uh, and by hitting that target, you will optimize what you are trying to achieve from that supplement. Okay, so I'm going to throw that back at you. So why would we take more collagen on? What about if we've got a chronic injury? So let's say, yeah. for example, we've been doing some speed work and we've, we've got a ruptured hamstring or uh, Achilles tendon problems, which are so common, especially with, let's call it older athletes, you know, the more mature <laughs> members of you. society. You know. <laughs> well, and nowadays, you're considered almost ancient at 30 years old in the world of sport you know <laughs> yeah. so you know yeah. it, it, for to see speed athletes specifically at you know on, on the last olympic games we saw athletes sprinting in into their late 30s early early 40s 
just incredible. So yeah. if we if we sustained an injury, um, maybe connective tissue, or we've got a bit of a joint problem, it, is there a justification for a, a loading period going up from maybe that eight, 10 grams up to maybe 15 or 20? For a period uh, of time? I, I, so it's, it's a really interesting question, James. And I think you know, as, as we always talk about in, in, in uh, you perform, it's about indication. It, you know, is there a need to take it? And we, we know collagen is important because we reduce collagen uh, about 1% per year as we age. And that is accelerated during things like menopause where we, we can see up to a 30% reduction in collagen. So, so there's good indication to use collagen. Uh, and, and obviously we've spoken about this, that, that dietary sources of collagen you know are, are, are not necessarily problematic but you have to be very targeted with that so therefore supplements make a make a very convenient source uh uh in, in order to top up that that collagen so firstly there is indication now obviously if, if you are incredibly active you're highly physically active you're an elite athlete then obviously what you've got is you've got greater turnover and so therefore the indication might be for more for a higher consumption in order because the indication is that there's greater damage when it comes to injury, I think you know, what's interesting here is that there is some lovely data um, that, that looks at things like Achilles tendinopathy and the role of collagen improving Achilles tendinopathy. All of those studies have used somewhere in the region of five to eight grams of, of collagen. It's sort of a, a standard use of it. And, and what they've shown is really lovely positive results on particularly things like Achilles pain. Um, now, the, the question is, should we take more if we are injured? And I think the answer to that is that actually anecdotally, I mean, just in your specific case, um, you know, where, 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 where this story sort of started when it comes to collagen and where it actually began with injury and, and using collagen. I think anecdotally, uh, there is, there is um, certainly a, a good evidence base to suggest that actually taking more can accelerate that, that repair rate. So, so I think, again, but it's indicated in that specific uh, case. So if you're very, very highly active, if you've got periods of very high density training, uh, which we have, you know, at this time of the year, um, if you are injured, then what we what we what we can see is that there's good anecdotal evidence that, that increasing that collagen intake can have a positive impact. Would that follow suit for our more mature athletes? Now, I mean, in my club, for example, there's some there's some fantastic athletes across all age groups. My training partner. One of our team members at You Perform, young Ben, I'm going to give a big shout out. He'll love that. He'll be watching this uh, recording later on today. Uh, he's 24 years old. Now I'm giving him 25 years head start <laughs> in the training <laughs> sessions in the pool. But, you know, and that's, and that's great. So he, he, he I think he, he will refer to me as an older athlete. But I actually look around at my team members who we train with and they're in their mid late 50s early 60s and actually there's a couple of guys in their mid to late 60s who are doing half Ironman and Ironman now clearly with the age as we pointed out depleted more collagen because of the aging process because of the collagen depletion and they're getting really quite severely injured now because of the wear and tear in the body We've started to introduce them to collagen. You know, one of our things is we don't we don't throw this at people. You know, this is like you, here's the evidence, here's the science, here's, here's the opportunity. It's up to you. You know, but is there a justification for some of the, those older chaps who are trying to take on, especially if they're new to these ultra challenges, to go through a longer period of maybe a higher dose, maybe going 15, 15 grams of collagen per day as part of their diet. It, 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 you pick up a, really, a, a number of really interesting points, actually, James. I think, you know, I mean, let, let's take it back. I mean, it was it, collagen itself as a supplement uh, in terms of uh, uh, that we can consume is an incredibly new product. I mean, the science of, 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 of being able to produce it uh, is very new. So, so what we know is that many athletes of, you know, I mean, I'm mid 50s and, and athletes beyond our age didn't have the opportunity to take collagen because it, it didn't exist. And, and, and actually the, the collagen they, that they got was from their, from their normal diet. And of course, what we know with, with endurance athletes, they have a penchant for, for calorie restrictions. So therefore that impacts on all sorts of nutrients that they're taking in. So I think what's interesting is that you're, you're talking to a group of athletes who have got lifelong, lifelong damage, 
that haven't been supported by colleges of supplementation. Um, and they're now getting to a point where they've got this reduction of 1% collagen per year. That may have been accelerated due to, to very high volume training, et cetera. And so, you know, the, the, the potential is, without obviously measuring it, but the potential is that they are exceptionally low in collagen. And so, again, when, when it comes to indication, is there an indication why we should be taking above the, the recommended dose? I think, I, I think it's reasonable to assume that actually it's, it, there, there may be value. There may be value in increasing that, that dosing regimen. Um, with the backdrop, the fact that we know that, that, that collagen, there are very few, if no, side effects of, of taking collagen. So therefore, taking excessive collagen shouldn't have any uh, deleterious, any negative effects other than uh, potentially upset um, if we're taking it in isolation without food, et cetera. Um, and so I, I think, you know, when you're talking to that group, particularly if, they're, they're, if they've got sequential injury, then there's no doubt that I think collagen in, the, in their nutritional regime, really important, perhaps above uh, what, what our recommendation is for, for younger age groups because of where they're at. Um, and I think also what, what's re always really important to remember here is that uh, uh, well, I've been doing an awful lot of work in a, a number of different areas, but, but cancer in particular, where we've coined this phrase of prehabilitation. Uh, and I think what, what, you, what you can't do, you know, what collagen is, is the magic wand. You don't take, you don't take a U-perform collagen gel and all of a sudden everything is sorted. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, it's really important to, to manage expectations on that. And I think what, what's really important as we age and as we age as athletes, what we've got to think about is this prehabilitation. We've got to do things in our program which prevent injury. Uh, it's, not, it's not good enough just to keep going until we get injured and then hope we can repair it as quickly as possible. And I think certainly with age and athletes, what we find is that re rehabilitation, that rehab process, that the, the ad adaptive process is much slower than it was when we were kids. You and I know this, you know, yeah. 18, 19, we could smash our bodies and still, you know, get up, pick up an injury, recover really quite quickly, and all of a sudden you're back to it. So I think that what we have to think about is that the, the, the nutrition piece and collagen within that is one part of the jigsaw when it comes to injury prevention. And I, but I think it's really important as part of that process that we make sure that we've got this prehabilitation in and that what we've got is we've got maintenance uh, within that across the training uh, cycle to make sure that we prevent injury in the first place. So I'm guessing one part of that jigsaw is the, the requirement to do strength and conditioning as part of the, the program, rather than just going, I'm going for a run today, I'm going for a swim today. I'm going out on my bike today or whatever sport you're doing. We actually need to do that preventative strength and conditioning. How important is that strength and conditioning now? Well, I mean, it's, it's not a training program unless it's got strength and conditioning in it. As simple right. as that. Okay. I mean, it's absolutely instrumental. And it is, it is the, it's the thread that runs through all training. And, and you know, it's interesting. We sort of picked up on the idea of prehabilitation injury prevention. Of course, there is a number of different things that strength and conditioning gives us. One is performance, is that we, we will have enhanced performance. Where does that enhanced performance come from? Well, it comes from being stronger, being more powerful, being more mobile, et cetera. Um, now, that, that will have a, a direct performance impact, but also what it does, and crucially what it does, it actually has a direct training impact. And so what it does, it improves each training session. And so therefore, the training impulse that we get accrued over time will then lead by inference into improved performance so so we, we see improved performance improved training performance and then crucially by reducing the potential for injury so by reducing injury what we do is we reduce the number of days lost to injury and of course it, what we know it, with adaptation the super compensation cycle is that we we stress the system we then that causes a reduction in performance. We then have a period of recovery and then we improve and we improve beyond where we were. That's what effectively training is all about. Um, and, and the key to this though, is that there is reversal. So with adapt, yes, we adapt with training, but we regress as soon as we stop training. And so losing days to injury is incredibly damaging to, to not only you individually and physically, but actually to your training process. So strength and conditioning is, absolutely fundamental to a training program to reduce injury risk and to improve training and competition performance 
So whether those guys watching us today are young or old, um, get down the gym, get some strength and conditioning. You mentioned the word mobility. How important is the likes of Pilates or yoga? Or, or, or is it just for us athletes a good stretching session? You know, does that play a part? I, 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 without any shadow of a doubt. I, I mean, it, what we call the range of motion of the joint so basically how we can move the joint the freedom of movement within that joint etc is really important um and obviously that that varies with with things like fatigue and, and things like strength you know dropping strength and all those type of things so it is mobility and stability uh, are two really important things it's interesting we use it from a health perspective we use it an awful lot when, when it comes to aging we talk about mobility and stability really is really important in things like falls prevention and those type of things in, in older individuals geriatrics but it, as, as an athlete mobility and stability are incredibly important making sure that our joints are stable will reduce injury potential uh, making sure that we've got strength endurance in that stability means that as we fatigue we maintain that stability um, of course and so should we be doing it 100 during training can we do it through individualized personal sessions yes we can uh, I think you know the, the rise in the in the in the interest uh, and popularity of things like Pilates and yoga is great because actually you know you and I both know and I know that when I program somebody to do some training, when I program in core strength and stability, and and stretching and mobility, uh, I can absolutely guarantee you that are the two things they won't do. Um, because because and, you know I don't, I don't knock it because I, I know what it's like personally you know it's it's the boring bit and it's the bit you think well look, I'm not running so how is this improving my running well of course it is yeah. it's making a massive impact on it and I think where the popularity of things like yoga and Pilates are great is that you do it as a group and it's yeah. much more fun I mean yeah. you and I know that on on training camps you know when we we're in Lanzarote or Tallahassee or wherever we were on training camps we were much more likely to do that type of work if we did it as a group and yeah. we had a bit of a laugh while we were doing it yeah so i think you know you can you know it's it's not yes you can do it on your own it's no problem yes you you should definitely be doing it on a regular basis uh if you can't get to a class then do it yourself um if you can get to a class it's a little bit more fun and you probably work a little bit harder at it do you know i'm going to tell a, a great story here because i think this undermines this problem uh, or, or, or makes this very, very clear. Uh, one very, very uh, dear friend of mine, also a, a teammate for GB for many years, Andy McKenzie, he's, he's involved in the team with us at you perform. He is about as flexible as an iron bar. And that's <laughs> when he was an elite athlete. You know, and, and, the, and, the, and the interesting thing is when you're inflexible, especially if you're in a sport of mobility, like fencing, for example, you know, it, it did mean that... Um, he left his foot in the way and I could get down there because my flexibility was very, very good. I say was, I don't spend enough time doing it now, but over the last eight years of competing as a master and a world-class master in, in, in pentathlon and biathlon and triathlon, I have sustained injuries, um, you know, hamstrings, uh, Achilles tendons, shoulder problems, uh, all these things that are directly associated with later life sport. And maybe that's something I really need to focus this winter on as I move up the age groups into the 50 plus for next season. Um, that will actually give me that little bit of an advantage and that little bit of step forward. Yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree, James. I mean, I, it, the fact is that it, it's almost, you know, people struggle to do it for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, and so therefore, if the way that I always look at things, and, and it comes down to a great Daley Thompson quote that I remember, uh, and the, the interviewer said to him, oh, I hear you train on Christmas Day. Why do you train on Christmas Day? And he said, because nobody else is. Yeah. And I think, you know, in, in essence, what we're always looking for is those marginal gains in training. Uh, and and it, when it comes to things like mobility and core strength and stability, when you're doing it, in the, it, it, you can be almost certain that a whole slew of those athletes you're competing against aren't doing it because they can't be bothered, they don't like it, they haven't got the time to do it. So it's it's a marginal gain that you can get in your training by doing something which fundamentally is relatively simple and relatively easy to do. Let's talk collagen peptides to round up this last of the introduction series. Because, you know, this is one of the questions that I get asked. I've been in the collagen industry for 18 years now. 
And I've seen some incredible recovery from athletes, you know, uh, non Stanford. I worked with her when she had knee surgery um, a couple a couple two seasons ago. And of, of course, she's back to full flying speed now. Yeah. Um, I think the incredible one was Ben Fletcher. People who don't know Ben, he's one of the sponsored athletes from uh, You Perform. He's actually he was Team GB. Then he was Team Island for judo. And we got him from a, a totally snapped fibula and tibula to operation back to the Olympic Games competing in five months. Incredible. Incredible. The guy is a man mountain. You know, he's a big athlete, so lots of protein, higher levels of collagen. The indication was there, a purely snapped leg and significant connective tissue damage. But, you know, the first questions that Ben and Non asked me is, you know, you've got lots of different products, James. Which is the right one for me and why? So let's start with the product and then where to use and how to use. So our signature product, our best seller now, which is one that's really making mass, is a game changer in the industry, is that active collagen gels. It's got two different bioactive collagen peptides. It's got the Verisol B in it and also that tender four. The Verisol B, that's the one that it stimulates new collagen production. And the tender four is connected for the connective tissue, the ligaments, tendons. You know, so when to use that product and, and what type of, where does that fit into our program? You know, is that a maintenance product? Is it a loading product? What's your thoughts? Well, you know, it's a really interesting area. It almost sort of goes back to what we were talking about earlier about specific amino acids uh, and, and, you know, targeted protein for, for, for the indication for the job that we're trying to achieve. And I think, you know, when we talk about uh, collagen, it's really important. There are different types of collagen, uh, you know, which, again, is really, you know, it, this is something that we've done at you perform because we because it is science led you know the homework has been done to, to identify these different types uh, to make sure that what we're delivering is what people are looking for and so it, it, and, and to think about it simply you just think about different types of collagen have a different role in the body uh, and and generally there are three different types uh, i mean there, there are actually more than three different types but three different types to some extent that, that we that we focus on one is around hair nails and skin uh, so to some extent, it's sort of the visible collagen, if you like. And I think what's always interesting here is that you, it's very difficult to, to imagine what's going on, on with collagen inside the body. And I think what the external uh, the external um, collagen is telling you is what's going on all over your body. So as we age, things like fine lines and wrinkles, things like brittle hair, uh, poorly growing nails and, and brittle nails, those type of things are a good indication of, of low collagen. And so, you know, there is a type for hair, uh, skin nails and hair. There is a type of collagen which is focused on things like connective tissue in ligaments and tendons. And then what we've got is we've got a, a type which is then focused on articular cartilage. Articular cartilage. So if you think about the bones themselves, as the bone on bone come together, the, the surface of those bones are covered with cartilage, and they're really important for the for the movement of that of that joint, particularly pain free movement. And so really it's about making sure that, and as you described beautifully, is that the, the products that we have, whether it's the active gel, uh, whether it's the active collagen in tablet form, or, or, or whether it's the collagen in our whey protein, they're all delivering something slightly different. So just making sure that what we're doing is we're taking the right product at the right time to deliver to the indication that we've got. So to give people guidance in the active gels, we've got the, the Verisol B, which is the hair, skin, nails, but also stimulates new collagen production internally. And the science is on the site to justify that, that statement. We've also got the tender foot, which is that connective tissue, the ligaments, the tendons, and of course the muscle fibers. So that's a, very much a maintenance, isn't it? It's an, it's an everyday, it's, it's like, it should be part of your training program as much as getting up and going to the pool or going for a run or, or going to the, the, the the sal or whatever you do that's that's part of your nutritional program day in day out yeah yeah, yeah absolutely right and i think you know again it, it's you know if we want to put it in sort of timing terms it's an acute response so it, it, it's the sort of thing the gel and we've said in in previous episodes of, of this 
is that it's something that we want to look to take within 30 minutes of activity. Uh, and, and what we've done is we've designed it in such a way that makes it incredibly simple. Uh, it is literally tear, take and perform. Yeah. Um, and and because it's a sachet, you can just throw it into your kit bag or pop it in your pocket and you can carry it with you and you can take it. So it's very, very easy to use. And, and you're absolutely right. It's one of those things, that it's, it's a daily approach. And in fact, you know, the, the way that we package it, et cetera, is that with you know, to some extent, most people are on single sessions a day, one session a day. And it's, it's absolutely classic for that. Every day, within 30 minutes post-exercise, basically immediately when you finish the training session, uh, down it goes and it's going to support what we know is happening again the indication is there's lots of muscle damage lots of stress on that connective tissue of ligaments and tendons as part of that training process and it will support the recovery of that awesome now the protein we've got whey combined with uh, uh the fortigel a slightly different collagen this particular collagen is focusing on cartilage um but you've also got that way that and it's very is a exceptionally exceptionally high concentrated 80 percent 82 percent concentrate whey we talked about the benefits of whey in the diet uh yesterday but this product actually delivers up to 20 grams of protein of which six grams is actually fortigel collagen um when why should we use this product well, you know, for me, this is about boots and braces, really, is what, is what, what you're thinking about is that, that, that there's a whole host of muscle damage going on. And what we know is that whey, particularly leucine, which is an important component of that, of that whey protein, is very important in terms, of, in terms of muscle resynthesis. And so by taking it in post-exercise, uh, and again, you know, we've spoken about this debate about when, when we should take it, but to my mind, post-exercise, uh, what it does is it complements uh, the active gel really nicely, which is a, basically a big hit focused on the connective tissue. What the whey protein will be doing is it'll be supporting that muscle damage, the generalized muscle damage, which has gone on, gone on during that that uh, that session that you're that you're taking it after. Uh, add on top of that, it's, it's just another level of support for that connective tissue, both in the muscle and and external to that, with things like ligaments and tendons. And, and for me as well, I think one of the crucial factors about about um, protein solutions um, is that it is part of the is part of the overall recovery process when it comes to things like uh, rehydration uh, now i'm, I'm a, a big proponent of using milk uh, with the protein powder um, mm -hmm. I, it, it, you can listen it tastes great it's one of the things that we worked incredibly hard on was making sure that these things tasted great because if they don't taste any good you won't take them um, it, it still tastes great with water uh, and, and certainly if you're looking if you're looking at, at calorie load with that, then then sometimes you know water might be a, 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 the right option. That said, I use full fat milk. I love that term full fat milk. It's you know two to three percent fat. It's not a hundred percent fat, which is a really weird thing that people have been indoctrinated with. Number one, that fat is really important. Replacement of that, it's it, it's important across the board in a whole host of different systems. Add on top of that, milk comes with a whole host of micronutrients to it as well. So to some extent, what it will do is it, it will support lots of other different areas by taking that protein. So the, the gel combines with the whey protein um, in, in, in a, in a uh, fluid form, whether it's with water or with milk, will support the whole recovery process generally from that session, which means you get better adaptation from the session and you're better prepared for the next session. Brilliant. One more question, one more collagen. So we have those active sports tablets. Now, every single tablet is one gram of pure filter gel. That's the type three collagen targeting and optimized, uh, sorry, type two collagen optimized for, the, for that cartilage. Um, when to use, why would I use this product? And is this, is this, a, uh, is this a luxury or is this a must have? when's the best time when would i when would i bring that product into my nutritional program i mean i, I would say i would say generally it's a, it's a daily use product uh, and, and certainly the, the way that the, the way that we we package it is for that it's five five grams a day is, is the target that we're looking for so it's five tablets a day uh, and 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 there are 150 tablets in in the in the pouch and so therefore it's a month supply um you know it, it's it is a daily product I, I think to some extent and it, you know 
who should be taking it? Well, effectively, everybody should be taking it. Um, because what, what, we, what we know is that across time, we have a reduction in collagen, particularly in, 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 uh, in, that, that, in the cartilage. Uh, and, and to some extent, it's why we, we see these joint issues increasing in prevalence as we age. And of course, add on top of that, if you're very, very active, then what you're doing is you're constantly damaging in a good way. So you have to be very careful about that term damage, but damaging in a good way. And so therefore there is turnover uh, on a continual basis of that uh, of that um, articular cartilage and so really what we're doing is we're, we're effectively it's it's there's indication and what we're doing with uh, with the tablets is we are supporting that turnover uh, of articular cartilage on on a daily basis um, and and again you know five grams a day five tablets a day that's the target uh, and that's where the evidence sits and so that you know that's what we recommend okay so for me personally I take my tablets in the evening. I take my gel first thing in the morning because that's just my regular routine. If I've had a hard swim session, a hard run session, I, I love that protein. As you say, I love the hydration effect from uh, the milk and the protein. I'm, I love milk personally. I can drink pints of the stuff. I'd rather drink that than water, to be quite frank. Um, <laughs> and then, I, you know, at certain times, if, I, if I'm starting to feel aches and pains, I also add in those tablets in the evening so i am really loading but then again i'm 50 pushing myself probably 15 15 hours a week i would say on average and it's high speed endurance work you know i'm you know one of those unique athletes that even coming to 50 i'm still trying to get down to that three minute per kilometer pace um and that low 60 point in the in the in the water I don't do what you do. I don't go out there for hours and hours. My race is done in nine and a half minutes, <laughs> which is the I haven't even warmed thing. up at that time. <laughs> you haven't even you haven't even thought about it. You don't even know if you put the right teacher on. <laughs> but you know, I I am done in I'm done in yeah definitely under ten minutes. So you know, for me, I'm loading through the day, spreading that protein through the day. There is something in 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 the beauty industry known as beauty sleep. Many people heard this, you know, you, you know, when you're young, your parents go, you need beauty sleep, off you go to bed, you know, but the reality is that period of time when you get that first deep sleep cycle, the alpha sleep cycle, the first REM2, REM3, is that a period of time when the body is open to taking on these amino acids that we find in collagen and utilizing them? Or is that a myth? Well, it's, uh, firstly, I mean, you and I must have missed out on that beauty sleep. That's all I, <laughs> I clearly need an awful lot more of it. Um, look, sleep is absolute. You know, we talk about strength and conditioning being fundamental. Sleep is a, another fundamental of quality training, without any shadow of doubt. It's there's this lovely idea about what we call the restorative sleep hypothesis, which suggests that the vast majority of of the restoration, the adaptation to training occurs during sleep. Uh, and, there's, and, and there's good indication for that. You know, so I think number one is, is sleep is absolutely crucial. I think, again, people think that the that, that quality of sleep is actually about, about duration and it's not, it's about the quality of sleep that you get, it's how quickly you get to sleep, um, how, how long you sleep continuously for. So if you've got lots of wake wakenings during that sleep, that will affect the quality of it. And then clearly in what you've just spoken about is actually the depth of sleep when we move into this phase four REM type sleep where we, we, we tend to see the greatest, the greatest um, adaptation taking place. Um, and of course, it's not only physical, it's also in the brain. You know, a good friend of mine is a brain surgeon. We often chat about this and that is that it's, it's, it's sleep is like putting the brain onto a, a wash cycle. You know, it's like it's like popping your brain into a washing machine, and what it's doing is it's cleansing it throughout the night. So, you know, from a cycle, and, and listen, anybody listening to this will know this that when you're tired, you know, quality of training is almost obliterated. It's so difficult to train when you're tired. You get much better training quality when you are well rested, which means when you've slept well and, and consistently well. It's not just about one night. It's that I, I like to think about sleep as being it's almost an investment in the bank. Uh, and what you're trying to do is make sure you keep that investment up across time to optimize the response. Now, when it, so when it comes to, to things like protein and sleep, there's some really interesting studies and, and some, some recent interesting studies, which actually look at the ingestion of protein immediately prior to sleep. Okay. Now, what, 
what I always find fascinating about this is that you know what when I was a kid, having a, having a, a Horlicks or having a hot chocolate made from milk before you go to bed was sort of, it was almost like what everybody did, you know. And then it, of course it fell out of fashion and nobody did it and, and nobody does it anymore. But the interesting results from that suggest that. Uh, by taking protein immediately before sleep, what you see is you see an, an increased uptake, an increased turnover of that protein throughout throughout the sleep cycle. Um, so I, I think it, it's really interesting. Sleep, absolutely fundamental. Protein linked into that sleep is absolutely crucial. And, and it should definitely be part of, of a high quality training program to ensure that what you're getting is the right recovery, which includes sleep and rest. Uh, so that you can optimize training stimulus and optimize performance. Well, there you have it. So my take home for this last episode, before we do one-to-ones with the different clubs, is that I'm going to shoot off now down to a class filled with lots of lovely young ladies, take my <laughs> active collagen gel with me to have straight after. And when I get back, I'm going for a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Some some of that may come true. I think the early part of that will is unlikely to come true. But anyway, mate. But you know what? It's a, it's a, it sounds like a great plan to me. <laughs> it is, you know, as we said before, it is about the quality. Something that that that, that we you perform work tirelessly on to make sure that we ensure the absolute best is in our products. We do that through our informed sport process as well, uh, which is you know somewhat unique in this industry. Uh, it, it's about timing of that making sure that you take it at the right time and crucially it's about the quantity making sure you take the right quantity for the job at hand and that is something that, that we lead people we lead the industry in uh, in each of those different areas all of that information is on our website uh, so people can read about the science they can read about what they should do when they should do it and how they should do it and, and you know what we love hearing from people so if people have got uh, you know, feedback on, on what they're doing and what difference it's made to them. You know, get onto the website and, and get in touch because it it is absolutely a passion of ours, isn't it? That that we we want people to be better. That's that's our that's our really our end goal. Very much so. We are we have created a game changer. We're seeing it with hundreds of thousands of athletes, not just across the UK now, but across the whole of the world. You know, our our products are being shipped to top marathon runners in the US all the way down to South America, across Europe, and we're supplying some of the top professional athletes, as well as athletes um, who just want to be active, you know? So I think we're on to something, Whitey. You know, lots Good. more education to come forward. We'll keep on pushing the barriers um, on product development. So cool. as ever, it's been enlightening. It's been great fun. And Emotional. I- I look forward to chatting to you really soon. Thank you for your time and uh, take care, train hard and see you soon.